The, uh, the question's often asked, why, why uh, did I write the book? Well, there was a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, I began teaching a course called Spiritual and Ministry Formation about 15 years ago, which is required of all of our first master students in the MDiv program and now the MA Educational Ministries program. And in that course, I require the students to go through eight diagnostics that I've put together into a packet. Uh, spiritual gifts, uh, their ministry passions, uh, their talent inventory, their temperament, ministry values, uh, how they're doing with particular ministry competencies. And then I sit down with the student for an hour one-on-one. -on -one. And if, uh, if the student's married with their spouse for, so it's a total of two hours, and we talk about all the diagnostics indicate in terms of focus in ministry. And uh, that's proved quite invaluable uh, over the years to help our students understand the way that they're specifically called. And so, <clears throat> as I said, I've been doing that for 15 years. Uh, but then, about 10 years ago, I was given the responsibility of putting together another course for the seniors called Ministry Leadership. And that course has more to do with developing an understanding of the student's style of ministry, what kind of church situation that would fit him or her uh, best. And so, uh, one of the concerns that I was having at the same time was that too many of our graduates were going into churches that did not fit their ministry style. Now again, the ministry style we were able to discern from their first semester and then through field service, they were able to hone that and have a greater understanding by their senior year and refine that in a philosophy of ministry and paper that they did. But then they were going out into churches that simply were not a good fit for them. And so as a result, uh, too many of our students and student families were in uh, uh, toxic situations for them in churches. Uh, now, the church that they would go to would be a good fit for one of our other graduates, but was not a good fit for them. And so, at the same time, I was reading the national figures, which indicated that 34% of all MDiv graduates from the 250 seminaries in North America, uh, only, uh, well, 34% didn't make it past the fifth year of vocational ministry for leaving ministry completely. And our percentages were not that high, but nevertheless, they were too high. And so I, I, I realized that there was a lot of damage being inflicted on our ministry families, and especially not only on our graduate, but on his wife and his children. And that was causing me a lot of, of uh, upsetness. And so, through my PhD studies that I <clears throat> did 15 years ago, I began to look into all the literature being developed by the business community on what's called corporate culture. And I began to see a correspondence between the fact that churches uh, have a corporate culture, uh, churches have a personality is what I've called it a certain way of doing things. In fact, the way I define a church personality is, quote, the way we do things around here in this church in order to glorify the Lord. And so my studies of 75 PCA churches now, it led me to realize that there were about eight different distinct ways of doing ministry. Uh, not just in our BCA churches, but in churches across the spectrum. 
And so I began to see that I could match the ministry style of our student who was becoming a graduate with the ministry style of a particular church and see what degree of connection there was. So I created what I call a communication wheel. And again, it has eight different sectors or styles of ministry. And I've gotten to the point where I can predict pretty accurately the degree of difficulty that one of our grads and his family is going to have in a particular church. Now, I want to make clear that when I'm talking about ministry stuff, I'm not talking about right and wrong, good and evil. Uh, there's certainly character issues that get involved, and that is right and wrong, good and evil, and, and certainly there's sin that erupts. But that's uh, as important as that is, that's not what I'm focusing on. Uh, my focus is simply on biblical, God-honoring, eight different styles of ministry it, for the individual graduate and individual churches and matching them. So in my communication wheel, I've come to the conclusion that if we can place a graduate in a church that's within one sector of his or her ministry style, then the probability of a fruitful ministry during the first five years is going to be significantly higher. And degree of satisfaction of the church will have with our graduate significantly higher. And I, my, my thesis is that if we can give uh, our graduates during their first five years a positive ministry experience where they're able to not only identify in greater depth but um, uh, test out their particular ministry style, uh, then we're going to have them for the rest of their lives in vocational ministry. Otherwise, probability is we're going to lose some very good men and women that uh, should not have been driven out of ministry. Now, uh, nationally, in the 250 seminaries, as I said, the rate of um, people leaving within five years, vocational ministry is 34 percent. At Covenant Seminary, we've gotten that down to 6.9%. And it's because we work at it quite a bit, and Joel Hathaway uh, is key man in terms of making those connections for us uh, with our administrative staff. So that's really what the heart of the book, or what drove me in writing the book, was to help individual ordained people or staff people make a connection to a particular style of church so that their ministry would be of maximum fruitfulness. So that's, uh, that's really what drove me to write the book.